Hey everyone, it's Mel. Welcome back. I am currently on my patio because I have to plant, finally, <laughs> this rose that I had purchased from Heirloom Roses now a couple of months ago, maybe a few months ago now. Um, and she's still in her nursery pot. She's not happy. The weather is getting cooler. Um, so I want to get her in her temporary pot before we reach fall. Um, and that way her roots will have enough time to grow and get strong enough to last through winter. Okay, so I'm gonna turn you around and show you what I'm going to do, where I'm going to put her, what I'm going to use to plant her in, and yeah, we can get started. Okay, so here's our rose, not looking happy. This is um, the ebb tide, E. BB Tide from um, Heirloom Roses. I'll put a picture up because this is doing it no justice. And we're going to put her in that pot there. Um, and we're going to use our potting soil, that potting soil there. And Heirloom Roses recommends that you don't use a um, granular fertilizer for the first year of your rose's um, life. So I'm going to use a liquid fertilizer. And although it says indoors, it's totally fine. It's for blooms. It's organic, it won't hurt it. So let's get started getting this girl in and ready for the fall. Okay, we got in our potting soil. So now let's get her in the pot and then we will deadhead and fertilize. You can see here, we have a few blooms that went to um, hips. And I wanna see if I deadhead the hips and the dead blooms, will that possibly let her reflush? Okay, well that was <laughs> quick, a few minutes. I could have done this a couple of months ago, but you know, things got in the way, but I definitely wanted to get her in her pot next to her new neighbors <laughs> um, before we get into winter. Um, because typically when you plant something, you wanna give the roots uh, anywhere between six to eight weeks that's the rule of thumb um, to get their get their roots established. So we are here at the end of summer, it's the end of August. So hopefully I've given her enough time. All right, let's give her some food.
she's all done. She's in her home until she can get some height and width to her and until I can decide where I'm going to put her in the landscape. But had I done this when I first got her in, I think, late spring, early summer? This is probably late spring. She would have been glorious, like her picture. But that's okay. We get to things when we can get to it. Um, I'm just happy I finally got it done. Now I'm going to move on to my next project. Come with me, please. These are foxgloves that I planted from seed. And as you can see, maybe not that one, but look at this guy here. They need to come out this little cup and get into the ground. I didn't pot them up because I just didn't want to do the extra work. I didn't. So I fed them in these little cups. I mean, but look, look at that. Look at how big that is. They're not happy. So I, I got to take them out and put them in the ground. Um, and because I unfortunately had a bout of, what is that caused by the uh, leaf hopper, I had to take out a few of my echinacea because they had um, a disease from the leaf hopper. I have empty space. So let's walk over to the garden and get these girls in. Okay, we're gonna take our girls to the garden where we're going to plant them. Did you guys see that video, the um, leaf hopper video? The video I did about the leaf hopper and I had to take out my um, my girls, my eckies. I had to take out some of them. Um, not all of them are gone, but I took out the ones that were a bit worse for wear because there's no cure for that disease. Um, and I think it's aster yellows. So what that means is I have extra space here in the garden and I'm going to find home, a home for some of these girls. All right. I have a little, that is cute. I have a little shovel. I don't know if this is going to work. It's for seeds. But let's try it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so right where the um, echinacea plants were that I had to take out, I have a hibiscus. One of my hibiscus is here. Do you see the leaves on this? Can someone tell me if they think this looks weird? I think this looks weird because this is how the leaves should look. Um, not like this. To me, it's resembling, oh, she's so pretty, what happened with the echinacea. So I'm getting a little nervous. Can someone just look at it <laughs> and tell me what they think? Okay.
put in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten holes, ten or eleven holes, but I put in at least two or three plants per hole because I'm anticipating some of them not making it. So I'm just buying myself some insurance there. All right, we are good to go. Don't forget, guys, look at this leaf. Tell me what you think. All right, on to the next project. As you can see, I have quite a few more left to go, but I wanna scatter them throughout the garden. Um, and I'm gonna do that on a different day where I'm wearing sleeves because the mosquitoes are tearing me apart. We don't have West Niles out here. <laughs> New York State Zone 7B. All right, so we're gonna head back to the patio so that we can work on the other project. And that is, see, starting for fall, yay! Okay, so we're gonna get started with our collard greens. I need this for Thanksgiving dinner. I like to grow them fresh in my garden because my family can tell the difference. It tastes really good. Um, spinach, broccoli, and lettuce because I want a really good salad. Cabbage. These are just like the staples, the standards, and my favorite. And kale, of course. Now, as an insurance, I got some starts from my local nursery, just in case, you never know. If something doesn't pan out the way you want it to. Um, starts of some broccoli and starts of cabbage that I'm going to put in the garden. But it's also nice if you start your seeds after you start your starts because then you have a nice little staggered um, harvest ready for you for the fall. As usual, I'm gonna use my cups <laughs> as my planters. Um, and then we're going to put the seeds in here with water on the bottom. When you water from the bottom, it helps to keep the top dry which then helps to have um, less um, those annoying flies that can cause your plant to have um, dying off. So I like to water from the bottom. of what I'm planting, just right on the cup. It's easy to see and I don't forget what I planted.
Hey everyone, so I'm going to finish the rest of the seeds um, off camera, but that's essentially it. I'm getting ready for the fall planting. I have to put um, more soil in my, my raised beds because as you know, over time, the soil does decrease. So I'm going to do that um, and get the uh, starts in and get them started. Um, thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I got some chores done that I've been putting off for a bit. Let me know if you have any questions and also share your feedback with me and let me know what you think that might be on my hibiscus plant. Um, all right, guys. Thanks again. And yeah, take care.